Well, as the war rages on between Israel and Hamas, the humanitarian crisis grows. In Gaza City sits the only Roman Catholic parish in the Gaza Strip, Holy Family Church. But now, not only is it a place of worship, it is also a place of refuge. Currently, about 500 Christian refugees who have been displaced by the war are seeking shelter there, and the numbers are growing. Joining us now to give us more insights is Ed Clancy, Director of Outreach for the Aid to the Church in Need. Ed, always good to be with you. Uh, thanks for coming on. First off, uh, let's talk about the Holy Family Church. What more can you tell us about the parish and also the challenges they're facing right now? Well, it's a small community of Catholics. Uh, in, in Gaza, there are about eleven or 1,200 uh, Christians in all of Gaza, and amongst them, about a third of them are Catholic. Uh, so the community is very small, but it's uh, very strong. Uh, there's They're taken care of by the uh, the priest of the Institute of the Verbo Incarnado, a order started in Argentina, and the Sisters of the Holy Rosary. And for the most part, they're a very close community and very, like as I mentioned before, a strong community. And they answered the call immediately when, when this began to take in all people. And now uh, of the a uh, thousand or so Christians there, maybe half or more, are are being sheltered in this church. Yeah, and what are the biggest needs uh, for them? And also, how difficult is it to get aid in that area right now? I mean, is it even possible? It's, I, I would say, nearly impossible. Uh, we are in regular communication with Sister Nabila Sada, who is the, um, the nun in charge of the community. And uh, she said that they have nothing. Um, you know, we communicate very infrequently over these last two days because of lack of of, um, of cell phone connection. Um, she has tried to send video messages, but uh, again, the connection wasn't very good, so we have to rely on very poor quality audio connection. Um, they need medicine, they need food, they need water, they need uh, blankets and mattresses because slowly the numbers have increased from uh, 300 to more than 500 now, maybe it's close to uh, 700 people that they are sheltering, um, and each day it grows a little bit more difficult for them. Yeah, and how is aid to the church in need? I know it's a hard time to, with all this going on, but but how are you all trying to help and provide assistance? Well, the first our first effort is to make to make sure we understand exactly what we what they need for help, and then the next thing is the best way to to achieve the aid. Currently, there's no channels of communication, uh, no, no channels of relief going in very directly. And with the recent advent of humanitarian uh, pathways opening up, we looked at, forward to taking advantage of that and making sure that any aid that is given, there is some portion of it gotten to the, the church and the community. Uh, it is always our role to support the role, to support the local church in this way. And so um, we're going to investigate all means possible to make sure that they have uh, at least some aid that we can get them. Yeah, we have about a minute or so left, Ed, but, but I want to touch on this. I mean, we know that Israel's urged civilians to get out of Gaza because of the war and the impending ground evasion. That said, I know, and we've talked about this, I mean, you're in contact with, with many people over there. Um, what are you hearing from them? I mean, are they trying to flee? Are they trying to get out, or are they choosing to stay put? I think there's a good number of them that would like to, but the passage out is not easy. Uh, there is no guarantee of a secure passage out. Uh, there has been no direct communication as to which direction to go. I mean, there's essentially two points of access, one from their east and to the south into Egypt. Uh, the one to the east goes into Israel, and uh, that's sort of a hard no. Uh, there is hope that the southern passage will open up, but obviously the church is located in the northernmost part of Gaza, so it would be something like a 30-kilometer or more journey uh, down to the south to get even close to the border. So it would be arduous. Uh, and a lot of the people who remain behind are elderly and infirm. So th their their travel would be difficult. So all of that would have to be in consideration if anything was to be done to get them out. Yeah, quickly, I mean, what's your biggest concern about all of that? Well, I, one of the biggest things, obvious, I, the importance is the, the safety and the, the people to get out safely or to be safe. Uh, the other thing is, would, is this the end of Christianity in that area? Uh, you know, it's very likely that the hundreds that will leave uh, will never come back. And what does that mean for the long-term stability of the region? Whenever there's a Christian deficit, there's usually a, a vacuum, and it's not really filled by other groups other than the church. 
So that that is a concern in the long run, but immediately it's the safety and the uh, and the security of these people that they either get out or find uh, a place of safe haven. Yeah, we got to pray for all of them. Ed, thanks so much for your time today and all that you do. God bless. You're welcome. Thank you. And God bless you too.